Hello everyone, my name is Idiotic Synergy and today we're talking about the Primaris Psyker. Now, when I say Primaris Psyker, you probably think of Space Marines, but you would be wrong because before Space Marines, you had a Psyker called a Primaris Psyker. And it used to be an old metal model and now it's been replaced with the Blackstone Fortress model that you can buy separately and it's been like that for quite some time. And I have talked about the uh, Primaris Psy... Uh, no, I talked about the Wild Vein Psychers. And if you are going to have Psychers in your army, in your Imperial Guard army, I would highly use the Primaris Psyker. Especially now, because you can't use Wild Vein. Wild Vein Psychers do not exist anymore. Which is a good thing, because Wild Vein Psychers sucks. They were just god-awful. And for them to be any good, you would need to spend, I forgot what it was, but you needed to spend 30 quid on boxes of three, and you needed nine of them for them to be good. And they were just utter shit. However, the Primaris Psyker, this was before the new 9th edition codex dropped, uh, but the Primaris Psyker was a pretty good choice, and now it's your... Is it your only choice if you're going to have a Psyker in your army? I think it might be, though don't quote me on that because I could be wrong. Uh, but it's a very nice model, but we've all seen it before because it used to be part of the Blackstone Fortress uh, kit. And the old Wild Vein Psyker was an old metal model, so seeing it being sold separately is understandable. And I like it. I do like it. It's quite a nice little model. Uh, it's not new because it used to be part of Blackstone Fortress, but it's a very good model. And I can see people using this in-game. And, yeah, has like a little Laz pistol there, which I think is quite entertaining because it's a Psyker. And, oh my god, I can't remember what the old Ballistic skill was, but I think it was like Ballistic skill 4. Which was a lot better than the Wild Vein Psyker. Which was Ballistic skill 6. Which, yeah, I hated the Wild Vein Psykers. And I admittedly still do. Uh, but I, it's kind of sad to see them gone. Uh, but saying that, the Primary Psyker is very nice. I do like how they kept the coat. And, well, we've seen this model before. So I shouldn't spend too long on it. But I do like the massive vein in her head. Because that just looks like the worst pain. It really does. It looks like she's having one hell of an aneurysm. Which... To be fair, being a Psyker for the Imperial Guard happens all the time. And I like this cone of shame she has. I assume it's a cone of shame, but I have no idea what this is. It just... <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it just looks like a cone of shame. And maybe it's like some sort of regulator for psychic um, power or something. I don't know. I don't know. I I do like it, though. It does remind me of a cone of shame that a dog would wear if it kept, you know, eating its own foot or something. Uh, but I also do like the staff. I think the staff is a very nice uh, staff. And I can see people... I mean, it seems like it's easy to just remove the top bit and replace it with something else if you so desired. There seems to be not... I mean... All it would need is a simple clip, and then you can replace this icon with anything. And I can see people who are playing Gene Stealers using this model as a unique... I don't know what unit in Gene Stealers this would fit, but it would look like a really cool HQ. And hell, it would probably look like a really cool Gene Stealer model. All you would have to do is paint the skin differently, and, you know, have different icon... And a different icon there. And boom, you've got a really good Gene Stealer model. I don't know what model you would replace it with, though. Or what unit, I should say. Anyway, I think I've witted about the model enough. Uh, it's a very decent model. 20 quid, though. It's a, it's a bit much. It's a bit much. I mean, yes, I know there's a price increase, but... Oh, 20 quid. It just hurts my soul a little bit. Uh, but despite that... I think we need to have a look at the rules because since 9th edition, uh, well, since their new codex, there's of course probably been a rules change. 
And if not, then this video has been redundant, but hey, I hope you enjoy it. Anyway, let's have a look at the old rules, shall we? So, this is the Primaris Psyker. And... Uh, hmm... Okay, so, there's no invulnerable save. I thought they had an invulnerable save, but obviously I'm wrong. So, no invulnerable save, they're 60 points. Uh, movement 6, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 3. Strength 3, toughness 3, wounds 4, 3 attacks. And it's a HQ. Ha, I always thought this was like an elite choice or something. And is there any other Psyker? Uh, there's an Astropath. Uh, but you need to accompany the... <laughs> hmm. I've... Would you be better just bring in an Astropath? I don't know. I really don't know. I think the primary Psyker is lacking a little bit. There's no invulnerable save. I think that's the thing that's throwing me off a little bit. There is no invulnerable save and your base save is a 5. Meaning you can just nuke this twat from orbit. You really can. And yes, you will probably hide this person behind like a bunch of guard. But all it takes is like just one flank and then that's it. The primary psych is done. There's no invulnerable save, any AP. Basically, it's a six up save or nothing. I, I don't know if I like this or not as a HQ. As a HQ, I think it's kind of lame. If it was an elite's choice, then I think I would like it more. Anyway, uh, it's got a Laz pistol, uh, which is, well, we all know what Laz pistol is. Strength 3, no AP, damage 1. And if it was Necromunda, you could reload it on 2s, which is always fun. And 4 staff, uh, which... The 4 staff... Oh, only the primary Psyche has a 4 staff, apparently. Uh, but strength plus three... What? Why? Why is it strength plus three? <laughs> Why is it strength plus three? Okay, strength plus three, AP minus one, damage uh, D3. You can manifest two psychic powers in those smite and two psychic powers. Right, I'm going to have to try and find psychic powers. And here we are. <laughs> that was easy. Uh, so, yeah, Imperial Guard Psychic Powers, Night Shroud. Uh, you can select one friendly Astra Militarum unit within six, uh, within 12 inches of the Psyker. You cannot select a Titanic unit unless the result of this Psychic test was an unmodified 11. Until the start of your next Psychic phase, each time an attack is made against this unit, an unmodified hit roll of 1 to 3 always fails. Okay, <laughs> that one, uh, that one's quite nice. I like that one, but it's only the one uh, friendly Astra Militarum unit. So if you shove this uh, unit inside a tank, and because the tank isn't Titanic, then that that would be really good to use. Uh, that really would. That would be one hell of a deterrent against um, las cannons. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's Psychic Barrier. Select one friendly Astra Militarum unit. Uh, models in that unit have a 5 up and vulnerable save. Very useful if you've got like a group of guardsmen. Uh, saying that, uh, this is very useful against a group of guardsmen, or for a group of guardsmen anyway. Uh, Gaze of the Emperor. Uh, it's just. That's just a. <laughs> that's a smite with extra steps, and I hate it. So you draw a straight line between any part of that model's base uh, or, hall, or hull and this Psyker's base. Roll 1d6 for that enemy model's unit and 1d6 for uh, other units that... that, that uh, I can't talk. That this line passes over. On 1 to 5, the unit being rolled for suffers one mortal wound. On a 6, that unit's rolled suffers d3 mortal wounds. Uh, that one's kind of shit. Um, terrifying Visions. Subtract two from the leadership characteristic of models in that unit. Your opponent cannot select that unit for the insane bravery stratagem. Uh, 
okay, so you can't just auto pass a your opponent cannot auto pass a morale check, nor can it use any rule that would enable them to re-roll a morale test. In addition, roll two d6 if um if the result is equal or greater than that unit's leadership. Uh, any action that unit is currently performing immediately fails, and until the start of your next psychic phase, that unit cannot perform actions. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay, that's that's quite good. And what else? Night shroud. I think the best ones personally is night shroud and psychic barrier. Uh. Can you can you stack these? I have no idea. I don't really use psychers at all. But can you stack these so like you have a really tough Imperial Guard group with an Invon save that can't be wounded on uh threes or twos? <laughs> that would be really cool. Uh mental shackles, uh subtract two from the move characteristic of models in that unit. Subtract two from advance and charge rolls for that are uh, made uh, for that unit. Very useful against close quarters uh, units. Very useful. That is that's really quite good. And psychic maelstrom, especially if you've got terminators that deep striked nine inches away, and you can then just go no nope, minus two. Good luck charging fucker. I hope you can roll an 11 or 12. And then they usually do. <laughs> That's usually the way. Uh, Psychic Maelstrom. Uh, warp value of 6. If manifest... Uh, if manifest... I can't talk. If manifested, roll a number of d6 equal to the result of the Psychic Test for each 5. The closest enemy unit within 6... Uh, not 16. Uh, within 18 inches of and visible to the Psyker suffers one mortal wound. To the maximum of six mortal wounds. I don't like... Hmm. I don't like Gaze of the Emperor or Psychic Maelstrom. I think you might just be better off just doing a good old-fashioned Smite. Uh, if I'm being honest, because Smite's great. And if you're lucky, then you get to do D6 mortal wounds. It's wonderful. Uh, Terrifying Visions is very useful if you're playing the objective. Mental Shackles is amazing against enemies that can that want to charge in. So World Eaters, Tyranids, Orcs, you name it. Uh, Psychic Barrier and Night Shroud are great for helping out uh, your guard units, your more squishy units. Also, it would be really great... Um, <laughs> there's an image. You can buff Ogren with this. There is nothing stopping you from just buffing a shit ton of Ogren. That would be that would be insane. Ogren with a f five up in vulnerable save, and night shroud. Let's go. <laughs> that would that would be really scary. It's like, yep. Good luck wounding my fat boys of death. They're coming to eat your shins. Eat your shins. Yes, Ogrens love eating, especially my one from Dark Tide. Uh, he just talks about breakfast. He's the bestest boy. Anyway, anyway, that's uh, all. Uh, that is all for for the uh, Primaris Psyker. Now, obviously, you can probably give this, uh, uh, you know, bodyguards or what have you. But I think as a HQ, it's I mean, it's all right. Not the best, certainly not the worst. i just looking at this. I thought this would be kind of wank, but it's not. There's lots of ways you can. You can basically just not die as a primary psyker. You can hide this fucker inside a tank and then let the tank just soak up all the shots. Especially if you've got a bane. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> you, could, you could give a bane blade a five up in vulnerable. Yeah, there's nothing stopping you from doing that. You can give a bane blade a five up in vulnerable save. And if you roll an 11 or 12, then you can give them Night Shroud. <laughs> that is... That's brutal. I like that. That I like that. But honestly, if you've got a bunch of Guardsmen or Ogren, just use these two and then you're fine. Uh, but yeah, that's it for the Primary Psyker. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you later. I really wish it had like a 5-up in Vaughn.
though, because it just seems really odd that, is, that there's no refractor shield or anything. Anyway, I've been Idiotic Synergy, and I'll see you later. Remember, take care, stay safe, and look after each other. Bye for now.